appreciate the opportunity to do this. I do. It's always a little bit nerve-wracking for me when, uh, when it's been a while. I've got a good lesson prepared, though. Did that come on? Can you hear it? Okay. All right. My lesson tonight is, can God count on you? It's a pretty simple question. Let's get right into it. In order to know if God can count on you, we should first know what it is that God requires of us. Deuteronomy 10, 12 and 13 says, Now Israel, what does the Lord your God require from you but to fear the Lord your God, to walk in all His ways and to love Him and to serve the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and to keep the Lord's commandments and His statutes which I am commanding you today for your good. Keep in mind for your good. Micah 6, 8, which is probably one of my favorite Old Testament verses. He has showed thee, O man, what is good and what doth the Lord require of thee, but to do justly and to love mercy and to walk humbly with thy God. We must learn to fear the Lord, a healthy fear one of respect. Proverbs 9.10 says the fear of the Lord is the beginning of wisdom and the knowledge of the holy is understanding. Proverbs 23.17 Let not the heart in thee sinner but be thou in the fear of the Lord all the day long. Proverbs 16.6 By mercy and truth iniquity is purged and by the fear of the Lord men depart from evil. In the fear of the Lord is strong confidence and his children shall have a place of refuge. Proverbs 14, 26. Let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear God and keep His commandments. For this is the whole duty of man. Or the whole of man. Do I reverence God? Ask yourself this question tonight. Godly fear is based on respect. We cannot acceptably serve God without a reverence and godly fear for Him. In Hebrews 12, 28 and 29, it says, Wherefore we receive in a kingdom which cannot be moved, let us have grace whereby we may serve God acceptably, acceptably with reverence and godly fear. For our God is a consuming fire. I must understand without faith that it is impossible to please God. Hebrews eleven six 6 explains that. To please God, must one must believe that He is. That is, that God absolutely exists. And that He is a rewarder of them that diligently seek Him. Do I reverence Him? I must ask myself, do I count God worthy of my best? Revelation 4.11 says, Thou art worthy, O Lord, to receive glory and honor, and power. For thou hast created all things, and for thy pleasure they are and were created. Why? Why does he deserve our best? He is God. Enough said. But Psalms 92 says this, Before the mountains were brought forth, or ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. Psalms 111.9 He sent redemption in His people. He hath commanded His covenant forever. Holy and reverent is His name. Do I continually count God as worthy? This morning, we sang this song for the first time in a long time that I can remember. And I promise I didn't go home and slide this in right here. Sometimes it's a little bit funny how things happen. But I love this song. It says, Brother S. Tedley wrote this. He said, Worthy of riches, blessings, and honor. Worthy of wisdom, glory, and power. Worthy of earth and heaven's thanks, thanksgiving. Worthy art thou, worthy art thou. I started to sing that, but I figured I'd like to keep you here. Okay, let's go back to our first question. Can God count on me? Can He count on me to walk in His way? Can He count on me to be steadfast, unmovable, 
Always abounding in the work of the Lord. 1 Corinthians 15, 58. Do I sometimes let him down? Sure. Do I pick and choose what and when I want to obey? Sure I do. All of us do at times. We should be careful to walk in all of His ways. Do I readily embrace a new understanding upon discovering errors and mistakes? When we read the Bible and we see something we've done wrong, do we make it right? Can God count on me to fellowship, which is contingent on whether I walk in the light of His Word? When I left the house this morning, I probably wasn't walking in the light because my wife said those pants don't match that shirt. <laughs> so I changed them. Jesus said in John 14 and 15, If you love me, keep my commandments. Not one of them. All of them. Is my love for God on a hit or miss basis? Or is it constant? Can God count on my consistency? A consistent worker excels in the workplace. A consistent Christian excels in his work for the Lord. We know that Romans 8.17 says that if we suffer with him, that we shall be glorified with him. Can God count on us to serve Him? Serve is almost a bad word these days. It has a stigma about it. When we think about serving, we think it's a lesser per person serving one of importance. But as Romans 12.1 says, I must present my body as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God. For it is my reasonable service, no doubt. Before David died, he had a little talk with his son, Solomon, who was about to assume the throne. First Chronicles 28, 9 explains this. He said, And thou, Solomon, my son, know thou the God of thy father, and serve him with a perfect heart and with a willing mind. For the Lord searcheth all hearts and understandeth all the imaginations and the thoughts of the thoughts. If thou seek him, he will be found. But if thou forsake him, he will cast thee off forever. 